Black entertainment television is the worst thing I've ever seen in my life. Martin Luther King Jr. is probably one of the most important people in American history. Certainly black history. Without him, I probably wouldn't have even been born. I'm mixed. Him and other figures around that time really changed America, I think, for the better. But one question always kind of crossed my mind. How would America be if Martin Luther King never did what he did? Well, the 1999 kids educational film Our Friend Martin attempts to answer this hypothetical question, and spoiler, it fucking sucks. Okay, so the film starts off with us meeting our main character Miles, a smart ass, naive, stupid ass nigga who's in sixth grade but still doesn't know the importance of Martin Luther King Jr. This is what I got all those ass whoopings for. The very next scene after Miles talks to his mother has me asking so many questions. Miles takes like three steps out of his house and immediately is chased by this creepy ass fat kid. What the fuck is this look? That is the look of a bona fide rapist. First off, boy. I know you ain't wearing that fucking itty bitty ass t-shirt. Ain't nobody up in here wanna see your gross ass infected belly button. Second, what the hell did Miles do to warrant this gluttonous child to chase him like this? Like, the movie frames this as like, this is a daily occurrence, like this is every day. Forget Martin Luther King Jr., I wanna know this story more. Like, I get that he's a bully character, but no bully of his size is gonna run three miles unless this kid did some shit. My theory was that Miles was running some game on big boy's girl, Maria. Anyway, so this fat nigga looking like a soft ass Butch Magnus from Boondocks chases Miles to the bus stop. But I guess Miles is somewhat saved by the bus driver, but it doesn't seem like it. To me, the animation looks like he's dead. Like the bus looks like it fucking crushed him in between the fence. That's the end of the movie, I guess. We never learn anything about Martin Luther King Jr. Instead, we just see a black kid get hit by a bus. Well, Miles miraculously survives being hit by the magic school bus, and then we meet his best friend, Randy. Now, before Randy says any sort of dialogue, I want you to envision what this fucking 90s shit stain sounds like. Like this just straight 90s garbage with a skateboard in hand. What do you think he sounds like? You might be as surprised as I am. Surf's up, Mr. C. Sandy, while I slam the lip. What? <clears throat> I'll slam my lip. Country, really. This isn't a big deal, but it really subverted my expectations. Like, if you just gave him orange skin, he could probably be a background character in a Rocket Power. Well, 90s garbage aside, we learned that the main character, Miles, sucked absolute dick at history. Wow, the only black kid who doesn't really know the importance of Martin Luther King sucks at history. I would have never guessed. So, Miles is given an ultimatum by his teacher. Either do well on the Martin Luther King Jr. field trip assignment or repeat history. So, Miles and his class go to the History Museum on the field trip while looking at a few of Martin Luther King's possessions, Miles picks up one that sends him and his best friend Randy back in time and they meet a young Martin Luther King. And the rest of the movie is Miles and his friends going back in time seeing Martin Luther King's most iconic moments and in one scenario they accidentally create an alternate universe where Martin Luther King never existed. And you can kind of guess how that turned out. You fucking nigger! They end up fixing it in the end by Martin going back to his own time knowing that he's probably gonna die. The world goes back to normal, Miles passes his test, and Butch Magnus is still fat. That's pretty much the plot of this movie in a nutshell. The writing in Our Friend Martin is kind of... Meh. I thought the premise was pretty interesting, seeing the alternate universe where Martin Luther King Jr. never existed was pretty fascinating and horrifying at the same time. But the characters are kind of basic, which I kind of expected because this is an educational film. But the characters are just basic archetypes and they're really boring, they have no personality and they're just kind of there. But I hate the fuck out of this fat bully character. He's a piece of shit. Not only does he not ask his racist looking dad to buy him a bigger shirt, he's annoying. Thanks for the loan, chum. Bitch, you know that shit is too damn small. The animation from our friend Martin is alright, nothing too remarkable. It's standard dick animation. <laughs> dick. Though, when the racism and assholes start happening, that's when the animation budget starts to kick in. The animations for these scenes are pretty brutal, especially for a kid's film. But hey, it's historically accurate and, you know, these kids gotta learn. The one thing I found bizarre and hilarious is their mixture of animation and live action footage. So the film actually uses actual footage from the 60s, but they draw on the characters at the top of the footage, and it looks so shitty and stupid. Also, I don't know what the animators or designers were thinking of when they came up with this, but this is not a fucking dog. 
The most surprising thing about this movie is the voice cast. I'm assuming this movie kind of is on a lower budget, being that it's an educational film. I mean, it's made by Dick. But they actually got a lot of good Hollywood talent in this movie. Angela Bassett, Ed Asner, LeVar Burton, Danny Glover, Whoopi Goldberg, Samuel Motherfucking Jackson, James Earl Jones. Talk about liking somebody. <laughs> Come here, boy. Oprah Winfrey, Susan Sarandon. They actually got Martin Luther King's actual son to play his dad. That's cool and pretty creepy. And they even got John Travolta, a man who has never harmed a black man in his life. Came down from heaven and stopped. Oh, what the fuck's happening now? Oh, man. Man. So is our friend Martin a good educational film about Martin Luther King? I guess I'd say so. It's not the perfect representation of the great things Martin Luther King Jr. achieved, but if you have a younger sibling or a young child, I think it does a decent job. It worked for me, and I saw this in first grade. Anyways, I just want to say thank you, Dr. King. Without your contributions, we probably still wouldn't be able to drink from the water fountain. I probably would have never existed, and without you, we wouldn't have this wonderful movie, and we wouldn't have this fat abomination. Thank you, Dr. King. I've been Mars Reviews, and happy birthday. <laughs>